Hey guys, Ash here from C4ETech and Qualcomm just announced three new mid-range chips. The Snapdragon 665, 730 and the very interesting 730G. In today's video, let me explain who these SOCs are for and what they're all about. After watching this video, if you feel you learned something, please do consider hitting that bell icon and turning on notifications. Please do. Now first things first, they aren't calling them chips or SOCs anymore, haven't been for a long time now. They are mobile platforms, that's the correct Qualcomm marketing terminology. So sorry about my opening, first of habit I guess. Now let us start with the Snapdragon 665. This is the follow up to the Snapdragon 660. Now the 660, if you remember, it started as a premium chip before slowly ending up as a mid-ranger. Now if you look at the cores and the clocks of the 665, it is actually slower. It is still an octa-core, 4 power efficient and 4 high powered cryo 260 cores, but up to 2 GHz instead of 2.2. The big difference here, well there are two. The first is that the 665 is built on the 11 nanometer manufacturing process compared to 14. So it will be able to reach its highest performance levels while producing lesser heat, meaning higher sustained peak performance. And all the while it would be consuming lesser battery, which is always a welcome improvement, right? Now the next change is the GPU inside. That's changed from the Adreno 512 to the Adreno 610. This Vulkan 1.1 support now, which should make for a 20% reduction in power consumption while gaming, Given that Qualcomm already has a lot of low-cost chips including the Snapdragon 670, 675 and even the 710, I'd expect the 665 to be a budget chip that just replaces the 660. So expect it on Chinese phones at around the 10, 12,000 rupees mark or even cheaper. Now, better gaming performance than the Redmi Note 7 at the price of a Redmi Note 7. That seems to be a good deal, right? That is what we can expect. The 665 will also be bringing better AI performance. It is supposed to be 2x faster, so the scene recognition should be twice as fast. And finally, it is supposed to be able to handle triple camera setups too. Now, moving on, let's talk about the Snapdragon 730. This is the more interesting mobile platform. The 730 and the 730G are built on the 8 nanometer manufacturing process, a first for Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm again mentions 2x faster AI here. Now the Snapdragon 730 is supposed to be the successor to the Snapdragon 710. It has a similar core split up, two powerful uh, cores and six power efficient ones. Now they are clocked up to 2.2 gigahertz each. So there is no change in the clock speeds, but the cores themselves, instead of Cryo 360, we now get Cryo 470, which are supposed to bring 35% better performance. The GPU here is Adreno 618, which is again a step up from the 616 on the Snapdragon 710. Again, Vulcan 1.1 here and 20% better power efficiency. Now I could get into the ISP and DSP upgrades, but that's just gonna be a lot of technical jargon here. But the basics, what you need to know, it can support more megapixels even with multiple cameras. It is supposed to be able to produce much better quality images. Now, the 730G, it is basically a Snapdragon 730, but with an overclocked GPU. So the 730G supports devices with up to Quad HD Plus display, so that's one difference. And the G here, in case you've not guessed it yet, it stands for gaming. So the 730G supports HDR gaming, and not just that, Qualcomm's also brought a lot of gaming features from the 855 here like the jank reducer which is supposed to help keep gameplay smooth uh, the wi-fi latency manager which is supposed to help optimize wi-fi settings for better online gameplay an anti-cheating extension to help detect when someone's cheating online and so on now it's not limited to just gaming the 730g also has some image related improvements the, the 720p 960 fps uh, it doesn't do that natively though, it just shoots uh, 240 FPS at 720p and then interpolates the frames in between to provide 960 FPS super slow motion. So these are basically the three new mobile platforms that are headed our way. We should start seeing phones with these in them in the next few months, the second half of 2019. Uh, so what do you guys think of the 665 and the 730? What do you guys think of the 730G, Qualcomm's new focus on gaming here? 
Now let me know in the comments below and here's another question. Do you feel I did a good job explaining these mobile platforms? If yes, vote this video up. If not, vote it down. Leave a comment either way. Let me know what you liked or disliked. Also subscribe and ring that bell so that you don't miss out on more of my content. And if you want to watch more of my stuff right now, here's a couple of videos you might have missed. And here's a link to my other channel, FTJ. So I guess that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.